Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to have the enjoyment of solving an algebra word problem. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. Now, if you're like, oh, I hate algebra, and I particularly hate algebra word problems as well. Listen, if you have to learn math, okay? Now, a lot of you, you know, want to learn math, and that's great. But if you have to learn math, and you're like, oh, I just have to learn this stuff to pass my course, you have to try to have the best attitude towards learning anything, right? So anything you have to learn, try to have a good attitude towards it. So think of these things as kind of puzzles or riddles or whatnot and try to have a bit of fun with it because algebra word problems and math word problems typically, you know, a lot of students just don't like them. But let's kind of have fun. Let's make, let's make the most of this. So the first thing we need to do to solve any problem is to read the problem. So let's go ahead and read this now. It says the length of a rectangle is four meters less than twice its width. If the area is 96 meters squared, what is the width of this rectangle? Okay, so that's all the information you need to solve this problem. And if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna solve this thing step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the answer here. Obviously, we're dealing with a rectangle and there's some information here about this particular rectangle, but the question is, is what is the width of this rectangle? Okay, so the width of this particular rectangle happens to be eight meters. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, that is so exciting. Matter of fact, let's give you a nice little happy face and A plus, A 100% and a few stars. So you could tell your friends and family that you knew exactly what to do to solve this particular algebra word problem. They'll be so impressed. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure they'll be calling you up anytime they have difficulties with mathematics. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into uh, this word problem. Now, just speaking about word problems in general, I'm talking about math word problems, whether they be an algebra word problem, a calculus word problem, doesn't make a difference. You need to follow the rule of three. And the rule of three, and I kind of made this rule up, is read the problem at a minimum three times. So the first time you read the problem, just get a, get a basic sense of what's going on. So obviously I'm like, okay, I read this problem, I'm dealing with a rectangle, and you know, there's some information about this rectangle. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about obviously a rectangle and what I need to know about rectangles. The second time I read the problem, I'm looking at more of the details of the information. So it's like, okay, I got a rectangle. It's four meters less than twice its width. Uh, if the area is this, what is the width? And then the last time I read this prompt, okay, before I start doing any math, is I really need to make sure what is the question? Like, what is this question asking? And it's asking, what is the width of this rectangle? Now, this might be, you know, kind of trivial. A lot of you out there might be saying, ah, that's just common sense. Well, listen, I'm telling you right now, I've been teaching math for decades. And a lot of students just tend to read a problem once and they start doing a bunch of math and they'll do great math, but they'll end up answering the wrong question. So take your time, get your bearings, and then kind of come up with a plan. So we're obviously going to have to know something about a rectangle here. Okay, of course, you're going to need to know what a rectangle is. And we're dealing with the area of a rectangle. So we're probably going to need to know the formula for area of a rectangle as well. But here... And this problem, we're dealing with an unknown value. Okay, we want to know what the width of this rectangle is. So anytime you're dealing with an unknown value, you want to use a variable uh, to represent that value. Okay, so anytime you're using variables like x, y, z, w, it doesn't make a difference. We're talking about algebra. Okay, so again, this is a very kind of common or typical type of algebra or problem that you will see if you are taking, you know, pre-algebra, algebra one, college algebra, it doesn't make a difference. If you're taking an algebra course, you'll see problems like this for sure. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here, uh, the first thing I'm gonna do, and I suggest uh, you do the same thing, is we need to establish a variable. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna let uh, W, okay, 
And obviously, I'm um, I'll let my variable be w, not z or x, anything like that. I'm going to let w equal the width of this rectangle because that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to let the variable w equal the width. And just to be, you know, extra specific, the width in meters because I am dealing with meters and units of measure are important. Okay, now it's important that... Uh, even though you're like, okay, I already know in my brain I'm going to use a variable and it's W, but you want to um, get in the habit of writing this stuff down so your teacher and yourself, if you kind of you know need to review a prompt, you know what you did. So write your write everything down. You know, model kind of best practices when it comes to solving algebra word prompts. Okay, so that's the first step right there. Now the second step is we need some sort of model. We need to kind of pull all this information together. So it's pretty um, clear that we want to kind of sketch out a rectangle and model what's going on between the length and the width of this particular rectangle. So that's what we're going to do next. So you just sketch out a nice rectangle here. And of course, I already have uh, some things established. Now, here in this particular rectangle, um, again, I'm, I'm being very uh, careful with my uh, diagram here, my little sketch. So this is a rectangle. And here I'm putting in this notation to indicate that this is 90 degrees. Now this might seem like a little trivial detail, but you know, anytime you're doing math, you want to be as uh, you know correct as possible. But if you just did a little rectangle like that, that's okay. But this right here is a quadrilateral. We don't know if you know the actual shape of this thing is like this. Okay, so to be super clear that this is a rectangle, you know, putting these little squares in the corner indicate that this is 90 degrees. Okay, so that is technically a rectangle. All right, so this rectangle has a particular length right here and a particular width. Now, what is the width of this rectangle? Well, we just established that W is going to be the variable that represents the width. So we'll use that W right here to represent the width. Now we need to talk about the length. You can already see here that I have an expression, but let's go back to the problem and talk about the length. So this is where you have to read the problem even multiple times. So when I talk about the rule of three, that's three, you read the th problem at least three times just to get it your game plan going to be like, okay, this is what I need to do. But you're going to go back and reference uh, the information in the prom, double checking, triple checking until you, you know, you're satisfied to you have everything correct. So uh, the prom says the length right here of the rectangle, right? This part of the prom is four meters less than twice its width. So we have to, uh, uh, translate this sentence, you know, into algebra. Now, for those of you out there uh, that are new to my YouTube channel, okay, well, first of all, I want to say thank you for watching uh, this video. If this is your uh, first video watching um, anything on my channel, I do a lot of um, uh, videos on translating uh, verbal sentences into algebra. It's really, really important that you have that skill down because it, this is a perfect example of reading a, a sentence, you know, using words, but now we have to translate this into algebra. So you really need to get really good at translating. And if you want extra practice with this stuff, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. But here, the length of the rectangle is four meters less. Okay, four meters less than twice its width. So if W is the width, what would be twice the width? Well, wouldn't it be two W? Okay, that's twice the width. And what is four less than twice the width? Okay, so the length of this rectangle is four meters less than twice the width. So if you just take away four from twice the width, this is the uh, representation of the length, okay, in terms of the width. So uh, we have 2w minus four is a representation of our length. So here is the length and here is the width. So at this point, we're looking pretty good, but we're like, well, how do I solve for W? Okay, we need to now uh, look to set up an equation. So when you're dealing with an algebra word problem, okay, once you have a your uh, variables established and you have some sort of model, now you need to build an equation so you can solve for that particular variable. And uh, this is where this part of the problem is going to come in, uh, uh, you know, to kind of unlock the next step. So here, if the area of this rectangle is 96 meters squared, 
what is the width. So now this is the part we need to use right now. So let's go ahead and take this to the next uh, level. And we need to know something about the area of a rectangle. Now, hopefully you know the formula for every area of a rectangle. It is the length times the width. And that's, you know, this is kind of basic math. You know, if you're like, I don't know this, you know, it wasn't given to me. Well, at this level of math algebra, this is really basic geometry. Uh, these are formulas or, uh, you know, equations and things that you should already know, you know, kind of like in your in your long term memory, like the area of a circle, the area of a rectangle, triangle, etc. These kind of basic figures you should know, you know, how to find the area of them because they're going to come up time and time again. All right. So the area of this particular uh, rectangle um, or the area of a rectangle is the length times of, uh, its width. And the area of this particular rectangle is 96 meters squared. So what is the length of this rectangle? Well, if we go back to our figure here, the length is 2w uh, 2, 2 minus 4, and the width is w. So it's going to be this times this is going to be the area. So let's go and uh, establish that algebraically right now. So we have the length times the width. The length, again, is 2w minus 4. The width is w. So the length times the width is, in fact, the area. The area is 96 meters squared. So we could just um, uh, construct this nice, lovely equation right here. 2w minus 4, all that times w is equal to 96. So we'll just kind of drop the units of measure for now and just focus in on solving this equation right here. Okay, so now... Uh, you can see that solving an algebra or a problem, there's some different phases to it, right? So you got to read the problem, you have to establish what a variable is, you got to uh, model what's going on, then you have to set up an equation, and then of course the next steps is your skills to solve this particular equation or whatever equation you came up with. So let's go ahead and solve this equation right here. Okay, so this is going to be an interesting little equation to solve. So what are we dealing with here? We're dealing with a quadratic equation. All right, so the first thing we want to do is take this W and multiply it uh, using the distributive, uh, distributive property. So it's going to be W times 2W is 2W squared. And then W times this 4 will be minus 4W is equal to 96. Okay, so what do we need to do here? Well, we have to know how to solve quadratic equations, right? You need to know a lot about this. So uh, this level of algebra... It would be like a first year algebra course, like algebra one. So if you're taking a pre-algebra course, you may not know, uh, you know, exactly how to solve a quadratic equation, but certainly algebra one, algebra two, college algebra students, this should be pretty easy. All right, let's move on to uh, the rest of this equation. So we have two uh, W squared minus four W is equal to 96. So what's the first step? The first step is to set this equation equal to zero. Now, if, again, if you don't know why, you know, I'm doing this, you need to review how to solve quadratic equations. I have a ton of videos on my um, YouTube channel on quadratic equations, but I'm going to really highly recommend that you check out like my full Algebra 1 course. It will go over everything you need to know and much, much more on all these topics. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is set this equation equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract 96 from both sides of the equation. So I got 2w. Uh, squared uh, minus 4w minus 96 is equal to zero. So I'm looking at these coefficients here, 2 and 4 and 96. I'm like, you know what? I'm pretty sure that uh, 96 is divisible by 2 because 2 is div uh, divisible by 2, 4 is divisible by 2. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to divide everything by 2. And technically, I can. Uh, I need to put a little 2 over here. So remember, in algebra, Whatever you do to one side of the equation, as long as you do it equally to the other side, uh, you um, do not break the equation. But what we want to do is make this quadratic equation as simple as possible. So we're going to divide everything by 2. And by doing that, instead of 2w squared, I'm going to have uh, w squared. Instead of 4w, I'll have 2w. Instead of 96, I'll have 48. And then I have my 0 right here. All right, so at this point, I am going to... Uh, start focusing in on my options to solve this quadratic equation here. I simplified it down as, uh, you know, um, 
uh, easy as possible, or not easy as possible, but as simple as possible, excuse me, you know, make my coefficients uh, nice and simple. And that's what you want to do. Now you want to say, okay, what's my options here? Well, this particular um, uh, quadratic trinomial, there's only really two routes you can go. You can try to factor, and if that doesn't work, you're going to have to use a quadratic formula. And obviously you can see that we can factor this because here are the factors right here. Okay, so that's why you have to be great at factoring to be successful in algebra. So w squared minus 2w minus 48, we can factor as w minus 8 times w plus 6. Now, if you don't know why, or if, you, if you're struggling with factoring, which a lot of students uh, do, struggling with factoring, you're going to have a tough, tough time passing algebra. Matter of fact, I'll go as far as saying that you will not be able to pass algebra if you don't know how to factor. It's factoring is everywhere in algebra. So make sure you get strong factoring skills. Again, reference my Algebra 1 course for full help on all this stuff. All right, so we have W minus 8 uh, times W plus 6 are the factors of this trinomial. Again, it's uh, set equal to 0. So here we have a, um, an example of the zero product property. Basically, I can solve this by setting each of these respective factors equal to 0. You can see that right there. So I have W minus 8 is equal to 0 and W plus 6 is equal to 0. Remember, we're dealing with a quadratic equation. There are always two solutions. So we're going to solve for w. So our first solution is w is equal to 8. And our second solution here is w is equal to negative 6. Now we're dealing with the length of a rectangle. So we're like, well, which one do we use? Well, we're not going to use the negative one, right? So it's really not possible. We don't use negative measurements, you know, on our, our ruler or whatnot. So we'll throw this one out. And we'll keep this one, w equals 8. So the width, right, is 8 meters. We don't need to do anything else. We don't even need to calculate the length. Remember, because the problem is asking for the width. And there you go. So w is equal to 8. Now, one thing that I would say is a lot of students, they'll do everything perfect. And they'll even get w is equal to 8. And they'll turn in their answer, w is equal to 8. you got to be uh, very, very careful with that. Because a lot of math teachers won't be as nice as me. They will take points off if you don't put in that units of measure. All right, You have to put in the right units of measure. Uh, so anytime you're dealing with a problem that's dealing with feet, inches, centimeters, meters, doesn't make a difference, you need to be thinking about your final answer. You know, what is the units of measure? What is the width? Well, the width is in some sort of measurement. And because we're talking about meters, it's going to be in meters. Okay, so hopefully you got something out of this problem. Now, how do you get better at doing algebra word problems? Well, uh, there's a lot that you need to do. The first is you need to make sure you have all the uh, skills down that are being applied to any particular word problem. Now, this problem was kind of a, a word problem that you would see like when you're studying quadratic equations. Okay, of course. Uh, later on in algebra, you might be studying systems or uh, exponential functions and things like that. So you have to have the requisite um, subskills first. Okay, don't try to solve an algebra problem if you struggle with you know factoring or solving a particular equation. So whatever you don't understand, make sure you go back and really strengthen those particular skills, and then uh, you kind of follow these general guidelines that I laid out. And you practice, practice, practice. That's the only way you get better at anything is through practice. There are no shortcuts. So, you know, all of you out there, um, you know, may have been told, hey, you know, if you use my, you know, this this math program or if you do this little shortcut, you won't have to put in the work. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. So if you really want to be good at math, okay, what you need to do is be focused committed and irrespective of your starting point you can be great but you're just going to have to work on those skills one problem at a time you absolutely can do this stuff okay so with that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures thank you for your time and have a great day